Since you're a welding virgin, we're going to pop that cherry kind of gently. No, don't hold back. Well, I think we have to in this case because um, it's best that you, you probably start with MIG welding okay. versus TIG. TIG is more versatile. You can do basically anything with TIG. MIG is primarily for steel, although it's used for aluminum and other materials, but primarily steel. And while it's not the most ideal way to learn, because it really doesn't teach you a lot of theory, it is the quickest way for you to be able to actually stick metal together. Well, I like it fast. I can do fast. <laughs> can you now? That's what she said. <laughs> yeah, so MIG welding is, is probably the easiest process to get started with. And, and it's like welding electrically is basically creating a short circuit to gener generate a lot of heat to melt metal. Okay. So you, you clamp your ground clamp on your workpiece. And then the other half of the circuit is actually this wire right here. Okay. So when you pull the trigger, what happens is this wire moves out via a motor drive in the unit, contacts the piece, sets up the arc, and melts into the metal you're trying to weld. Okay. And what makes it MIG is that MIG is an acronym. Short for? Metal Inert Gas. Metal Inert Gas. Yes. So you have your metal, mm -hmm. and your inert gas is usually carbon dioxide okay. from a, 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 a cylinder. So why is there gas? Well, it's because you ate too much cabbage. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so besides that, the welding gas, uh -huh. which is a much more pleasant type of gas, is... <laughs> <laughs> no way, my gas is awesome. <laughs> well, I don't think it would be very good for welding because the gas is used to shield the weld and exclude oxygen. So perhaps if there was some sort of arrangement that allowed rectal attachment and you ate enough gas producing food, it could happen. Get me the fucking burritos. <laughs> but if you get oxygen into the weld, what you're going to end up with is, is pockets of oxidization that's going to create a very porous weld. It's making rust. Making it rust, uh -huh. but more importantly, embedding those oxides that rust into the weld, meaning it will not be a strong weld. So okay. we shield it with a gas that is actually not consumed or used during the welding process. It just flows around the weld to keep the air off of it. <laughs> MIG basically is, is sort of like using a metal glue gun that simplifies it greatly. Yeah. But it's kind of the same concept, and you're, you're, you're basically using one finger to, to pull your trigger, and then all your concentration goes into to how you're moving the tip. Yes. How it, just the tip? Just the tip. Just the tip. Yeah, yeah, you, you, want, you want to go just tip. You, you don't, you don't want to, you don't want to go too far. So, as I said, we've, we've grounded our, our piece, and the best thing to do the Hold first... On. By uh, clamping it onto that table, you could essentially, the whole entire thing is grounded? Yes. Okay. It is a metal top table. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's very convenient when you're welding to have that a, is. a bench like this. Because then, then you don't have to fart around with that type of thing. Yeah, and it allows you to work flat. Yeah, and if you have an irregular, irregular shaped piece that you can't necessarily get this on, you can just lay on the table. Well, that's cool. Yeah. Um, I'm going to basically show you a dry run. Then we'll turn the power on, and I'll do an actual weld that you can watch through the uh, through the helmet. My runs are usually wet. Well, I can't help you with that. You might <laughs> want to ask a gynecologist. I've never had runs from there. Oh, I guess you were talking about something else. <laughs> Ew, gross. <laughs> At any rate, think of this like a glue gun of metal. Glue gun of metal. So if we were going to run a weld bead, we would place our tip about half an inch from the material and keeping this distance is very critical because if you're way up here all you're going to do is burn out your wire if you're way down here you're not going to be able to see anything and you might you might actually weld the tip to the, the surface okay so i just want so that little about half inch yeah okay and and you you this it's called the stick out <laughs> okay <laughs> so what you want to do is position your tip to press your trigger and then move slowly in an alternating back and forth pattern. It has to be back and forth, I can't draw anything else? Well, there are many different patterns you can use, Okay. but 
for this initial okay. uh, lesson and, and the most basic form of MIG welding, it's it's a back and forth yeah. pattern. Okay. I can't you, see a thing. That's, no, that's you won't be able thing, to right? see anything until until the welding arc is created. Okay. Okay. That's unsurprising because metal splatters everywhere. I should not be wearing short sleeves. I'm being prepared. Okay. Kind of looked like you were sort of going a little circle. Yes, little circles might be easier than back and forth, and little circle is fine because what that's going to do is draw. It's going to create the initial puddle, and then it's going to move the weld, and it's going to go back over that weld and penetrate even further. Perfect. We all like further penetration. Exactly, as deep as possible. Well, yeah. So the distance that I talked about, that half an inch, here's kind of what happens if it's wrong. Too much stick out, and all you're going to get is that. That is not a well. That is just melted metal turning into a little volcano, burning, and it's just causing a mess. But you can see, if I, if I start out too far and go closer, you can start to get that frying bacon sound, mm -hmm. and that's exactly what you're looking for. We want bacon. We want, we we, there's no time when bacon is not wanted. We always want bacon. Okay. So we're going to start wrong. That's exactly what it is. It's, it's the same pattern. Perfect. So you'll notice what I've been doing is I've been steadying it with my other hand. You got this one over here, this one up here, and you're just drawing. Yeah, just so you can hold the tip. The tip doesn't get massively hot. It gets warm, but it's just, the cooling, the, the shielding gas actually keeps it kind of cold. Oh. You wouldn't want to do it with bare hands, though. Yeah. No. So. Well, do with bare hands sounds silly. You could take with bare hands. This is a skill that will take you a little while to master all of the hand movements and the coordination. Mm -hmm. It, it, it's, you know, you don't expect your first ones to be perfect. Okay. But like anything else, it's, it's practice. Alright. So you want to give that a go? You can give me a bead. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that means. Do so you want a bead? <laughs> I haven't used this thing in years. I like it. I don't yeah. know, it's very gonzo. Yeah, I know. It's, just, it's an old style stick welding helmet, which is useless. I didn't think of like, like brand will offer you something. Yeah, yeah, like opera goggles. Maybe you need like a opera starched glasses. wig. <laughs> the, the, yes, a, a large white starched wig, traditional welding attire, <laughs> from, from Victorian times. Okay. Ready? I'm ready. Hold on. Okay. Okay. So stop right there? Okay. okay. That's fine. Your, your stick out was, was close, but you're moving way too fast. Too fast. You, you need to move about a quarter of that speed. It's my fast icing hand. Oh, yeah, I trim cakes like a motherfucker, so... I don't doubt it. <laughs> okay. Slow that down. Okay, slow it down. Yeah. But the, the distance was good? The distance was good. Okay. Yeah. Cool. But see, you can tell that it, you're going too fast because you weren't actually depositing a bead. You were just kind of melting the surface of the metal. Okay. So, yeah. Alright, mask on. Okay. It's a little too fast. It's a little better? It's a little too fast because you can see how you started out a little slower. Nah. Then as you sped up, you, 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 the bead wasn't as wide and, and it was just basically making a line on the surface. I'm getting but the, excited. The, the, <laughs> the distance was very good. Okay. And you had that frying bacon sound. I, uh, I heard the bacon. I heard the bacon. So that's the thing. When you got your mask down, are you like leaning so that you can see this tip? Or are you already know where you're going by this angle? What you're watching is where the wire contacts the metal and okay, forms so a puddle. Okay, so about it sideways instead of behind it. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I didn't realize you were behind it. Yes, it, it helps you a lot better when, when you're looking at it from the side. But it, you're, you're going to find sort of your own position there. I generally look at it from that about side. a 45 degree angle. Okay. I think you might have been here. I was behind the gun yeah. and I could just yeah. see exactly. Okay, now... Being able to see the well is, is one of the most important things. Yeah, no, no, it doesn't work very well. Although I think we've all been there where we're, we're under a car or something, trying to weld the top of an exhaust pipe, 
And the way I've done that in the past was with a little dental mirror. Oh. Yeah. Aren't you a fucking smart ass? Yeah, now I just take the exhaust off the car. Even smarter? Yes. Now that you know it come from the proper angle, we can give that another try and, and run another beat. I love coming from the proper angle. You ready for some proper beats? I am ready for some proper beats. Mask on! I did not. Okay. Ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a lot better, but you were moving a little bit too slowly. See how high the bead is? And a little bit far away from the material. Okay. So, faster. <laughs> a little bit faster. So you can see speed is kind of a particular thing. Speed is, is critical because the, the pattern of your, your bead and the speed at which you move uh, plays a key role into how much heat you're putting into the metal. Okay, I Obviously, can see that like, the slower one is higher up. The slower one is, is higher because you were just packing more metal on there. Okay, you said a stack of dimes. Yeah. Is that a common term? Yes, um, it, it literally looks like a, a dimes stack. More for more of a TIG welding term than a MIG welding term. I got like a stack of twoies over here then. <laughs> a stack of bump something. But. So I want to try that again. Yeah, give it another go. Okay. Practice, practice, practice. Mm-hmm. Last one. Yep. But you know what? Just, just stop for a sec. It might help if you if you change the angle of the torch so that you're a bit more like that. Because what that's going to do, it's going to force the wire. The wire's going to yeah, you're you're you were basically sideways. So you were what you were doing is forcing the wire against your weld bead. You want to force the wire against against the metal. So about that's your angle most of the time. Okay. So that you're you're digging a trench into the metal while melting it and putting your material into it. Oh. Penetration, penetration, penetration. It's all about penetration. Not getting enough of that. Clearly not. This will help. It will. Okay, mask on. Yep. So you're way too fast at the end, but this metal, middle section was pretty good. I gotta work on my speed. Yes, speed is, is one of the things that's, that's very critical. Uh, the other one was, tell me about those dials there. Oh yeah, I guess those are important too. Alright, so I'm looking at this and I yeah. see a matryoshka doll, a bunny, <laughs> and a turtle, and a penis goes into the vagina. That is yes. what I'm seeing. Well, oddly enough, that's exactly what they are. Lesson over. Okay, done. <laughs> but, but, really, But no, seriously, um, yeah, okay. <laughs> so most MIG welders have, have two important settings. Some of them have a lot more settings, this one does not. Power switch, yes. that might be self-explanatory. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, so the two adjustments that are critical in MIG welding is your voltage and your wire speed. Wire speed. The wire speed is, is the speed at which the wire comes out of the gun. That's fairly self -explanatory. simple. Self-explanatory. Yes, usually Turtle is slow, rabbit is fast. Whoa, hold on. Some of them, yeah. Go back, go back, go back, go back. Turtles are actually pretty quick. So, they are, yeah, they are. yeah, I mean, in the water they're fast. On land, they can, over the short um, distance, they can, they can scoot. Yeah. But I think, I think a rabbit is, is faster long term. Okay. So, but a rabbit's grow a lot slower in water. <laughs> can we test that? 
We'll have to test that in the future. <laughs> we need like a graph for but, that. Yeah, we should, <laughs> we should do some data collection of the speed of a rabbit in the water. Yeah. But but anyway, it's basically your 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 heat is generated by a combination of the wire speed and the voltage. Wire speed and voltage. Generally speaking, the more voltage and the more wire speed, the more heat you're putting into the material. Okay. And you're gonna ask me how do I know what to set these to? Oh, how do I know what to set these to? There's a chart for most welders. Oh, look at that. Yeah, so the chart gives you gives you um, starting settings for most material thicknesses, and then you can fine tune it from there. Oh, look, there's the wire. There. Oh yeah, yeah. So so here's. Sorry, so, my boobs in the way. Yes. I'm sorry. Sorry. Yeah. So so yeah, here's the wire that I was talking about. This is a, a little tiny spool, but you can you can. It's a bigger spool if you need to, and that's the drive mechanism that pinches the wire and puts it through the, the tube to the gun. Kind of reminds me of a tattooing gun, of it. Oh, God, don't call them tattoo guns. They're called tattoo machines. Oh, Every tattoo artist watching this now is going to send hate comments. <gasps> don't hate. I'm just, I'm just an unintelligent poor little girl. <laughs> so the next step is actually sticking some metal together. And I, I pulled these out of my scrap bin. Okay. So, um, if you're going to join two pieces of metal together, you don't just make a bead between them. Because they're going to move around when you're trying to weld them, and it'll be a disaster. You start with what's called tack welds. Just little welds to hold them in place, and then fill in your bead. Then you do the bead. Yeah. For stuff this thick, and just for learning, it's, it's not that massively important. But if you're doing like thin sheet metal or something, you have to do a tack weld every inch or so, and then fill in between them, otherwise that stuff warps and moves and you'll, you'll never get a joint. It's like pins and sewing, I guess. Right? Exactly, yeah, yeah. And the thicker the material, you, you, you don't need to pin it as much, and if you don't necessarily care about the seam, then you can just right through the machine. Yeah. Yes. Cool. Okay, so basically the way we, we join two pieces like this, these are called coupons, by the way, when they're welding practice pieces. I don't know why. Someone, sh someone probably knows. Okay, mask. Mask. Okay, we'll just tap it into place here. One. Two. Ow. What? Uh, something hit up. Something hit my belly button. Sweet. It's always the belly button. It's always it's because you're belly button level with the table. <laughs> we should put a piece of tape there. <laughs> just over my belly button? Yes. <laughs> and then we can join them together. Too hot and too much, too much uh, wire for this material, but that's the basic idea. And now to finish what you started. Yeah, you can finish that off just so you can see how you, how you can move the torch when there's an actual seam. You want to, when you do your circle, instead make it a bit of an oval, oh, wow. and make the oval covering the seam. Okay. Let's try that again. Oh, there we go. Awesome. Yeah. You got it at the end. You found your you found your distance and yeah. you found your 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 um, pattern over the seam. Okay. So let, let me get two of those and you can stick them together. Okay, you shall become yeah. one. So do do two tacks, one there and one there, and you can just for the tacks just kind of put the gun on it because that'll kind of help hold it in place a bit. Um, give it two shots, and then you can run your run your well bead. Okay. You did. Here goes. And it's gonna move and it's gonna warp, but we don't care. We just want you to stick the metal together. Okay. Yep. Ready? Yep. It might help if you if you hold the metal with uh, with your uh, free hand. I'm not gonna like cook my hand. I don't know. We'll find out. Well, don't put your hand on the well bead. Okay. Look at that. Yeah. No. If you're gonna use the if you're gonna use the gun to hold it, mm -hmm. like what what I if if I was gonna do this, what I would do is is I would just. 
I would just hold it about yay, and then there. Then do that, and then take my hand off, and then. Ah, okay. Yeah, that's that sounds safe. Yeah, because you can because you can hold this side a bit with the gun, but but you're okay to hold it there. It's not going to get instantly hot. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It, it'll take a little while actually for the heat to travel all the way down. Pretty good. And now it's stable. Yep. And then you can do. And it's stuck. Yeah, it's okay. It'll get stuck to the table. Okay. Yeah. That actually helps you out a bit. Okay. Perfect. Okay. And you want to lift the gun up off the piece a little bit, you know, and then keep your, your half inch of, uh, of distance. And your, remember your angle. That actually wasn't too bad. It was a bit a bit rocky, but you actually laid a half decent bead in there. You got good penetration, the bead is pretty flat, and your pattern's not too bad. Yay! That's exciting. You just have to keep your movement consistent and your 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 um, stick out consistent. But again, that's just practice. Okay. A bit drips through. You actually filled that gap really well. I'm all about the gap filling then. That's really excellent penetration. Yay. Congratulations on your fine penetration. Practice. It's true. Penetration like that normally only comes with several years of practice. Um, I know what that is. That's that's the thing that held your engine when we were doing stuff. <laughs> Reassembling. That was very specific. Yes. <laughs> I'll make, I can drag it out a little bit more. That. I know it. Perfect, yes. <laughs> this is a, a 13B and I guess 20B and, and also 12A um, rotary engine stand adapter. And okay. I've had a lot of people ask me about this particular piece. Um, did you build it? This one I did not build, but the company that made it no longer exists. Huh. So we can copy it and make another and show everyone how to do it. You're welcome. Because if there's anything that's safe about your first ever welding project, <laughs> it's building a part that has to support several hundred pounds. Perfect! Uh, th this is going to be awesome. Please use it. Never. Yeah, I, I'll use it when I feel like being maimed. Okay, can I watch? Obviously. Yes. <laughs> Perfect.